Hey, are you a business presenter? If so, do you suffer from poor pointitis? What? You haven't heard of poor pointitis? Okay, let me tell you what it is. Poor pointitis is a dangerous condition that affects business presenters when they make slide decks that are bloated, boring, and utterly sleep inducing. You know you got the ailment when your slides make you feel weak in your knees when you walk into the boardroom. Sometimes you may feel ignored and insulted by the sheer lack of interest shown by your audience during your presentation. What's worse, you get a sinking feeling after the presentation when you just think about the number of hours you wasted building those slides that let you down. Your daughter's school event you missed and the important client meeting you cancelled starts haunting you for a long time. Does it ring a bell? Yeah, I saw your head nodding. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. After all, the condition is way too common among executives, business owners, trainers, consultants, etc. and the repercussions affect millions of hapless audience worldwide every day. The thing is, you don't have to silently suffer from poor pointitis anymore. There is a permanent cure for the disease. By the time you are through with this video, you will know what to do to get rid of the problem once and for all. But first, what causes poor pointitis in business presenters? Before I answer that question, let me quickly introduce myself. I am Ram Gopal. I started my career in a pharmaceutical company called Eli Lilly Ranbaxi. I worked in sales and sales management in that company for around 6 years before I moved on to join a premier management institute to do my MBA in marketing and IT. From there, I got placed in a multinational bank called HSBC. I worked there for a little more than 7 years. When I decided to move on to start my own company with my wife, I held the position of Senior Vice President and Head of two functions in the bank. Talking about my wife, this is Aarti. She is my partner in life and in business. She did her graduation from Australia. She was my batchmate in the Management Institute. She got placed in iFlex Solutions which is now part of Oracle. When she moved on to chase the entrepreneurial dreams, she held the position of Head Product Development and Requirement Analysis. The company we started is Metamorph Training Private Limited. The company owns sites like PresentationProcess.com, AllPPTTemplates.com and PrezzoTraining.com. We specialize in one thing and we focus all our effort on that one thing and that is to help business presenters make high impact presentations. The most important detail about me is, I once suffered from PowerPointitis and today I am a proud survivor. It took years of practice and hard work to get rid of that condition. Today I have dedicated my life to help all those who suffer from the problem and show them a simple and permanent way out. Coming back to the question we were on, what causes poor pointitis in business presenters? No, it is not your fault. The real cause for the condition is PowerPoint itself. Yes, the way the software is constructed makes you really susceptible to the disease. Let me explain. The problem with PowerPoint is the software allows you to perform any task in multiple ways. Now you might ask, how is that a problem? It is a problem because of the various ways to perform a task. Only one is the efficient way and all the others can waste your time and cause a lot of frustration in the long run. Let me give you an example. Let us say you want to add page numbers to your slides. There are two ways to do this. One way is to pick up the text box tool, add a number and stick it to the bottom edge of the slide. The other way to do this is to go to insert, slide number and you select the appropriate command here by checking here called slide number and then you say apply to all and then the slide number gets added. At the face of it, it might appear that the result you got is the same in both the cases. However, one of the methods is the efficient way and the other method is the inefficient way. Let me show you why. In the inefficient method, 
If you want to add slide numbers to each of the slides, the way you do it is you select the text box, press Ctrl C which is the shortcut for copy and then use Ctrl V which is the shortcut for paste and then you change the numbers here. Like in this case, I'm going to press Ctrl V and I'm going to change the number from 1 to 3 and then I'm going to do that for the slide number 4 as well. In this case, we only have 4 slides to number. Now imagine if your slide deck had 40 slides, how much effort it would take for you to manually do this one after another. It is not only tiring but is error prone as well because it is not very easy to remember the sequence of numbers when you are in a hurry. Whereas in the efficient method, you can see that the slide numbers are automatically done. There is one other difference. Let me go to the inefficient way and let us say I want to add a couple more slides in the middle. Let me do that. So what I'm going to do here is between slide 2 and 3, I want to add another slide by going to new slide here and then say I want to add slide 2a. And the same way I want to add another slide between 3 and 4 and let us call this as slide 3a. Now if you see, this is the sixth slide but it says slide 4 and you have the page number as 4. That is because you have manually entered the page number one after another. That means once you create your slide deck, you don't have any liberty to add or delete slides. Otherwise, your slide numbering will all go for a toss. Now, let us do the same thing to this slide deck which is created in an efficient way. Now, I am going to do the same thing which is to add a new slide between slide 2 and 3 and I am going to call this slide 2a and I am going to do that here as well and let us call this slide 3a. Now, if you see, I go to the sixth slide and it is numbered as 6. The new slide that I've added already has its proper numbering and that is the difference between doing the same task manually and by using the right tools. Unfortunately, the inefficient method appears so easy and obvious because all you need to do is to go to a text box and enter the number and stick it in the right place and it looks attractive as well. Whereas the efficient method is not very obvious. You need to go to insert, you need to go to slide number and then you need to realize that slide number is not very obvious here. You need to find the slide number here and then you need to check and when you do that and if you don't say apply to all then you only have slide number for that particular slide. So therefore you need to know that you need to click this as well. Now that is too much to ask for from a commoner. Now let me make my point with another example. Let us say I have a presentation with four slides and I've applied one of the design themes here in the PowerPoint ribbon and the design theme I applied is this one. Now for some reason I decide to remove the background for a specific slide. Now as a simple person who wants to find a simple solution to this issue, where would you go? As you look through the PowerPoint ribbon you see that there is this option called format background so you think possibly when I go to format background, I would be able to find an option which would give me a clear white slide here. So I go to format background and here I see hide background graphics that when I click on this, I should actually get a clear white slide. So let us see what happens. I click on hide background graphics and all I got was this red patch which was there got removed and the slide background still remains. So now you get frustrated. You don't know what to do. You want a clear white background and there is no obvious way to do this. After a lot of thinking, you come up with the possible next logical solution, which is you select a specific slide where you want to remove the background and you want to apply no theme. Now, as I move my cursor on that no theme design, as you can see here, the slide looks exactly the way I want. So I finally found my solution. So I am going to happily click on that one. When I do that, you can see that the design theme for the entire presentation is removed now. Now tell me, how would you solve this issue? If you're a simple person with simple logic, there is no way you would be able to find this answer intuitively. The way you're supposed to do this is, let me apply this design theme here. 
if I go to that specific slide, I need to go here and then I right click and then say apply to selected slides and only then for that specific slide the background is removed. It's not at all intuitive, isn't it? So coming back to the problem, which is PowerPoint has multiple ways to do a single task and only one of those is efficient and the others are inefficient. And the inefficient method is so bright and obvious and the efficient method is not at all intuitive. So now you have one of two options. One way is to find the right tool for the right task by performing an elaborate search. The other way is to just pick up whatever that appears obvious and run with it. If you want to choose the first way of going to the internet in search of finding the right tool for the right task you may not actually get your answer immediately. The worst part is, once you get onto the internet, you get distracted by Facebook, Twitter, email and the like. And what starts off as a simple search for finding the right solution for a task ends up wasting hours of your time. And still, you may not find the solution that you really wanted. If you choose the second option of going with whatever that appears simple and obvious to you, most likely it is the inefficient way of doing it and therefore you might end up picking a wrong habit. Now, picking up wrong habits in PowerPoint is so easy because of the way PowerPoint is designed and that is a vicious loop. Because it is not just one wrong habit you pick up, that one wrong habit eventually attracts other wrong habits and before you know, you get deeply infected by poor pointitis. The problem doesn't end there. When you waste hours preparing your slides, you get very little time to practice delivering those slides. So you sound unsure in the boardroom and you lose business. Also remember, the time you waste on slide creation is the time you should have invested in building your business planning your strategies and spending time with your family. So your poor PowerPoint habits may be costing you so much more than what you realize. On the brighter side, if you know how to use the right tools, PowerPoint can help you build a powerful presentation much faster than any other software you can imagine. The software is ideally suited to create high impact presentations. The software has so much potential that is hardly ever realized by business presenters. What is the right way to learn PowerPoint? One way is to go through the manuals. The manuals could be in the form of idiots guides or Bible or your dummies guides or any such guides or it can even be the help files in PowerPoint. The problem with going through such manual type books is these kind of books are organized more as reference books than as training manuals. In other words, these manual type books are more like dictionaries. We all know that if we want to learn a new language, we don't go to the dictionary and memorize all the words. Because we know that knowing the words in a language is not the same as knowing how to speak the language. The same way, Knowing the various tools in PowerPoint is not the same as knowing how to use those tools to create professional business slides. So that explains why you were not able to improve your PowerPoint skills by going through such manual type books. The second alternative is to attend full day workshops. There are quite a few full day workshops that attempt to teach you PowerPoint. The problem with this option is, most such workshops are taught by professors or self-taught professionals who went through a couple of those manual type reference books which we talked about earlier. The course methodology is usually academic and hence you don't get to learn the inside tips, tricks and techniques that help you perform tasks in the most efficient way. If you really need to learn PowerPoint to make effective business presentations, 